welcome and welcome back. My name is Emily Garvey and if you are new here, I'd love to share DIYs and thrifting and homemaking in this home that we just moved into in March. My parents bought at this house and we are helping renovate. Putting together clips for this video has gotten me so excited and proud of how far we have come. So I hope that you guys enjoy it and it is inspiring to you. I'll share some styling ideas, a lot of thrifted furniture, including one new piece that I have not shared. Let's dive into where we've been and then we'll come back to the current and we're gonna do a little DIY and some styling. Let's go. So our first endeavor throughout the entire house was to remove the popcorn ceiling. So we took down all of the lights and then my husband and my brother-in-law tackled scraping all of this off. So this is the floor we were keeping though. Oh goodness. I won't get into the details of this, but if you've been following since way back when, then you know we had a small leak. And so we do have plans to replace this floor eventually, but it is very livable as so is. So we used to have these on here. They're kind of yellowy. And then what our handyman, uh, Dennis and Alan have been working on is switching them all, going around to all of them and doing that. Now you can see a little bit of the ceiling done here. My brother-in-law finished that up all completely smooth. We didn't add any texture. We wanted it to be completely flat, which is quite hard to do. And then we went in and prepped all the walls and started doing the trim work. The order that you are supposed to do painting when you're doing everything is ceiling, trim, and then walls. So the trim color that we chose was Accessible Beige by Sharon Williams. You can see it even on the door. We did it there. The ceiling is ceiling white. This truly was a whole family affair as my in-laws helped watch the kids while my husband and I got to do some of this and my parents flew down, my brother-in-law helped out. We painted these walls and most of the walls in the house, Alabaster by Sherwin Williams, and then we moved in. Before, when we lived in our townhome, we only had one living room. I mean, most houses only have one living room, but now we actually have this formal living room. And so everything in this living room is pretty much new. And by new, I mean thrifted new. And this area that we moved to in Bradenton has been an awesome place to find Facebook Marketplace finds. This little hutch I found from the sweetest family in the area. She said it had been in her family for three generations, I believe, and it was only $220. I feel like that's a really amazing price for the shape that it's in. It's been refinished and just how old it is. And if you guys don't have any of these moving straps, I highly recommend. So I already shared with y'all these Pottery Barn couches that I found on Facebook Marketplace, but this is the first arrangement that we had. And then we switched it to this with the couches and the chairs kind of together. And then they kind of frame these windows really nicely. And I've never had a living room big enough to not have my couch against the wall. And it is such a game changer. I think it really just made this space more conversational. We were able to make some of these larger purchases because we moved in before this house was completely ready and my parents were generous enough to not charge us rent for a few months and so we hung up some of the lighting overhead we didn't have any overhead lighting when we first moved in and then we just had to kind of shuffle around the construction materials that were still being installed but it is finally time to start styling this place i have heard that to make a place feel well designed you need three things a rug window treatments and good lighting i am a firm believer that every Every rug needs a rug pad. So they can sometimes be expensive though. And I actually found this one at a thrift store for, I think it was $30, whereas the same size one was 80 on Amazon. So I grabbed this. It was actually new in package. They had three of them. So I got all of them. Now let's talk about this rug. I'm obsessed with this one. It is from Wayfair. It's from Amber Interiors line. And I think it has this really beautiful kind of vintagey look to it. The texture is a little bit different. It's almost like a thick corduroy. And I love how the blue contrasts the orange really nicely from our floors. I shared an entire video of making my curtains and hanging up new rods. So I will link that in the description below. I won't get into it too much here, but this transformed the height of this ceiling as well as the next thing, which was 
this ceiling fan. So we do live in Florida and a ceiling fan is just a must in this climate. So my dad was able to come down for a week and install ceiling fans in all of our rooms. And I really like the ones that we ended up with. We had to move the hole for this one just slightly over. So yes, we are going to ignore the previous hole. And the ones that we ended up, I will link below. They are DC current, so they will be very energy efficient and they kind of have a modern but timeless look to them kids are in bed this is like the only time i get to actually like move things around and make changes without them like undoing it so let me show you the shelf that i just brought in we had this in benjamin's room before we actually made it it was a diy that my husband and i made and it's a little bit like modern we thought it was modern at the beginning now it just kind of looks like ikea so <laughs> we are going to use it in here i think it actually looks great with the wall color in here. It is painted linen by Magnolia Home and it's just like really warm white. Sorry the lighting in here is so bad, but it is, it's dark outside as you can see. We also have this corner here, which currently has Dominic's entire closet. <laughs> Our closets are not quite finished in the master bedroom, but I think we could put this shelf in that corner or against this wall. I think I'm gonna start it on this wall just because this wall is like blank. Like there's nothing there and we need to fill this up. <laughs> Found this rocking chair, you guys won't believe it, at Goodwill. And I got it for a steal of a deal. So it was only $30 and we think it's fairly old. I'll do some close-ups of it. We've looked into some like jointery things and like the plywood because the back is actually made out of plywood, but the joints are made with like wood pegs, which leads us to think it's a little bit older. From my research, what I found is that plywood, if there's that involved, it could be as early as 1850 because that's when it was started to be more common and everything and so I mean I'm not an expert on this stuff maybe you guys know maybe you guys can let me know when you think this chair was made but anyway I think it's a cool chair because I feel like a chair always looks really nice like balanced next to something tall like a shelf or like a hutch or something like that. So I put it here for the time being. But speaking of this shelf, let's go ahead and style this. I put all of my decorations and frames and art and everything into boxes based on which room I want it to go into. And so I'll show you the stuff that I have gathered for this room. And then we're gonna start putting it up on this shelf, on the coffee table and on the hutch that I need to give you guys a closer look at too, because that one is new. My box of everything that I would like to put into this room. This is all just collected thrifted art. As you can see, I really like gold frames. So I might need to mix that up a little bit. I have this DIY one that's very modern and I love mixing modern pieces with more like vintage and old things. And then here's a bunch of stuff that I could use for the coffee table and on the shelf, things that I think are really pretty, have the same kind of color palette and everything. So this is the first view that you see when you walk in from our front door. So I'm gonna start here because I think I will choose the best things probably. And so I would like those things to be front and center. the contrast of how traditional this painting is and the frame and everything with how modern this piece is and I saw me thrift these recently I love how sculptural they are they kind of create like a little bit of negative space and like lightness and then this is like grounded and heavy this is an old DIY that I did I like painted it with that like dirt and stuff so I think I am happy with this shelf. Now I want to move on to these shelves, which this is like such an awkward space, but what I had been trying in here was actually for actual games that we could play with. But these are things that my mother-in-law has brought back from Mexico. And this is a marble like domino set. I love the look of it. And I think it looked really nice up here. But then also we have this beautiful marble chessboard on our coffee table. And I have all of the pieces in here. These obviously, have to stay up away from the kids because they're they're very fragile. But I'm thinking I have an idea of how I can display that. I thrifted this wooden bowl that has like two sides and I've used it for my jewelry for a long time. But I was thinking I could probably put the white ones and then the black ones in there and that way you could see them and stuff and I can keep it up high so it would be out of the kids' way. So let's see if that looks good. 
really like this, but it's too low. So anytime I have that little problem, I just take a book and, well, this is a Bible, but we're going to put that under there. And it gives it a little bit of height and I think just makes it work, in my opinion. That looks better. It gives it like structure. So this is a little tip for you. Just put a book under it and it'll make it look more intentional. Next, working our way down, I have some more brass items that I think I'll use on this shelf to kind of balance the gold up here with the gold down here. And I think I have something black as well. I think that... Styling is just so trial and error. You just have to see what, what works. Inevitably, some of it is going to look so incredibly awkward. I feel like that works for now. It's not perfect, but I think this kind of works. You know what? I think we need another book there. Let's bring some color in the larger book. We also braced this to the studs because we don't want it to obviously to tip over with the boys. So I need to be strategic of where I cover up those little brackets. So now that one is fully covered. And I'm gonna say that's, that's better. I think I need some stems in here. Um, so I'm gonna find, see if I have anything that could go in there, but that might just be something I have to keep an eye out for. I always like placing some of my books horizontal and then some vertical. I also place them in color order. I know that might be ridiculous. Let me know if that's something you do too. It just makes it look more styled. <laughs> So now let's play a fun game of guess what Emily is saying because the audio got completely messed up for these clips. But I think all I'm really telling you is that I'm in love with this hutch. The functionality of it, the look of it, how old it is, the story behind it, and just like how sweet this family was that we get to continue this piece in our family. It just feels like a really true blessing. And so, yes, this turns into a desk as I'm demonstrating here, but more importantly, it actually covers up something inside that I do not want to see all the time, which is my husband's gaming stuff. Also, it just keeps it safe and away from toddler hands so all of his like playstation stuff is in there and then behind these doors is very functional it's his monitor so i won't be styling this inside but let's style the top because it's a shorter and kind of small piece i want to add some things on top to increase the height look of it and then i also wanted to put art on both sides of it and i wanted it to coordinate but not look the exact same i don't know what i'm talking about here but Pretty much all I'm saying is that I only have hung these two pieces of art in our entire home because I'm scared to put things into our walls after <laughs> doing so much work to fix them. But these I hung up so that I would have a spot to film with some pretty background. And I think that the frame mat of these is kind of a nice linen that matches the other side, which is this newer piece that I got at Hobby Lobby and it is linen. And so it kind of coordinates and has similar nature themes. This is probably so annoying hearing me talk and watching me talk. I'm so sorry, but I'll make sure this doesn't happen again. I think it was because my ceiling fan was on, but I went ahead and put this one up here to add that height. And I wanted it to be really simple up here and just focus on larger items. I did want to bring elements from the other shelf that I had just styled. So I brought in the other brass candlestick that matches. This candlestick was definitely broken and I needed to melt the wax so that it would actually stay in there, but it works for now. And then I wanted to leave it just three on one side, one one on the other to keep that odd number and then keep it just really, really simple. But I might change this up seasonally. We'll see. You guys already saw me style this console table that I found on Facebook Marketplace for another steal. And But I just wanted to mention that this I pulled out of the garbage of my neighbor, like the yard waste. And I think it's a rubber plant, which be careful because if you're allergic to latex, it has latex in it like the sap does but it is holding up really beautifully i love it in this little vase i don't have any water in there it's just kind of dry i guess and it's been here for about two weeks now and it's starting to get a little bit droopy but i think it looks really pretty so if you want some <laughs> greenery dig through your neighbor's yard waste okay so this coffee table is not one that we plan to keep forever previous owners actually left this for us so it's it's a nice solid table and everything it's really strong but um, my husband and I actually have plans to DIY one, and so stay tuned for that. Underneath, I have styled some of my kids' 
books. We're gonna leave that under there. <laughs> and on top, let me show you how I've been styling it. Never had a styled coffee table. We've never had like a formal living room. This is our formal living room, so the kids aren't like playing on this all the time. Is there like Lego table so I can actually style it? So we are going to address the throw pillow situation, but I think I might hear a baby waking up. So I want to get quickly hung up some art here and here so that I can at least sit with it and see if I like it for a little while. If you're a mom, you know that it's something you can't do around the kids because then they'll be hammering all the walls themselves. So I need to do that while they're asleep. <laughs> If you know antiques and collectibles, then you may recognize this print. Now, this was from my grandparents. They gave it to me from their wedding, and it has some significance to the month of July when they were married. So I'm not exactly sure. I need to ask them more details on it. I somehow got that right on the first try. I don't know how that happened. But on the other side, I have these two that I think I will stack. They are uh, beautiful scenes in Italy. You guys actually helped me figure that one out. I got them at a thrift store for like, I think it was $5 each. So I love old churches and architecture. So I think that they will look really wonderful on that side to kind of balance the florals and then have some more like structural, architectural. So underneath this piece of art is this beautiful bassinage that my late grandfather um, actually made. So I always use this to store like my current projects in. And right now that is some fabric. So we're gonna make some pillows because they can be expensive. And I know I can make them for super cheap. So let me show you how to do it, super easy. I've done this before, but these are gonna be even more simple. There we go. <laughs> I have been loving the cottagey block prints that I've been seeing in McGee & Co and Amber Interiors. And so I wanted to incorporate these, but I found this fabric at Hobby Lobby. I was shocked to find block print there because I was looking everywhere. Now this is duck fabric and it is 100% cotton and you should always wash your fabric before you sew with it because it can shrink. And in this case, it definitely did. So I had gotten half a yard, which would have been enough to cover the Ikea pillow inserts that I always get and love, but I had a little change of plans and decided to cover up this really not so cute <laughs> fur pillow that I have and I stuff inside other pillowcases. With only a half yard of each of these two fabrics, I was able to complete this pillowcase with a little bit of extra. I also did install a zipper, which is completely unnecessary. You could do this without the zipper. I just wanted the option to be able to remove it. And I was able to find this zipper on sale at Hobby Lobby for 99 cents. So the cost of this pillow came out to less than $5. So I went ahead and ironed all of my fabrics. I was planning on making a blue one as well, but I just didn't get to it in this video and decided to just do a block print mixed with a stripe for a real cottagey look. I love projects like this so much where I can make something that's relatively quick and looks more expensive than it is and is truly so, so cost efficient. But I also understand that some people do not like sewing. So I will link some ones that I found on Amazon, some ones that I actually did get as well for Mother's Day. This was my little treat, get some new throw pillow covers. I always just buy the covers because I do not need more of the inserts. I can just replace those. It saves so much space and money. So once you go all the way around three sides, you can flip it inside out and then put your insert in and sew it up on the other side, or you can be complicated like me and install a zipper. I am not gonna show you the tutorial of how I did this because I really don't know how. I am completely self-taught when it comes to sewing and maybe that will inspire you guys because I really don't know what I'm doing half the time, really more than half the time. I never know what I'm doing, but hey, it, it somehow works. I would not suggest doing a stripe though because it is very hard to get it exactly right. So here's the other pillows that I have been collecting. I will link them down below. I wanted a very eclectic look, also just super neutral and organic, bring in some of the greenery from outside. I really, really like this linen-y one that was on Amazon. All of these were less than $10 a piece, I believe. All right, guys, it's been a few days, a few swim lessons and birthday parties later, but we're back. Are you ready to see the final reveal of this place? Let me remind you where we started. Now for the final reveal. 
There is a quote by C.S. Lewis that I've resonated with lately and it is, imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild. At first, perhaps you can understand what he is doing. He is getting the drains right, stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. But presently he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abdominally. What on earth is he up to? The explanation is that he is building quite a different house from the one you thought of. You thought you were being made into a decent little cottage, but he was building a palace. He intends to come and live in it himself. I've mentioned a little bit how difficult this move has been for myself and for our boys, but we are starting to round the corner. We are starting to build community and for that I am so thankful. So if you enjoyed this video, I would so appreciate if you would give it a like. Let me know how you think it turned out and I will see you in the next one. Have a blessed week.